third-party Discord clients have never really been allowed by the Discord TOS, but Discord never properly enforced this part of their policy, so people actually making these clients and using these clients didn't really care because they knew they'd probably never get banned anyway. Even though there were some instances out there of people saying, oh, I got banned for using this client, or I got banned for using that client, there was no real evidence that, that was actually what they were being banned for. In some instances, you did have the Discord team replying saying, oh, third-party client not allowed for this reason, this reason, and this reason, which I will go over in just a bit, but... In a lot of cases, they didn't really show that that was why they got banned, because they had other bannable offences as well. Now, this might be changing, and Discord might properly start enforcing a TOS, because recently, the main developer of Cordless got banned, and he decided to stop working on the project. I felt like I had to talk about this because I've done a lot of promotion of these third-party clients, and I wouldn't really feel that great about people watching my videos getting banned for just using an application that I've talked about. So, this application, if you don't know what it is, is basically, I would say, the most popular terminal Discord client. Now, being a terminal client, obviously, it's still not going to be very popular in the grand scheme of things. Things like Better Discord are way more popular, but if you are someone who does like to use terminal clients, this is probably going to be your go-to application. Now, it wasn't just the main developer who got banned. There were also people known to the developer himself who were actually working on the project or just generally using Cordless, as well as someone in my Discord server as well. Now, the only person I have any evidence from is the developer himself. So any of these other people, I'm going to put into the other category I mentioned earlier, where they were using a third-party client, but it could just be a coincidence and they were doing other things that got them banned anyway. When I contacted the developer, he stated his ban was for API abuse. Now, API abuse is a very general term that can even apply to things you can do with the official client. So, if you make a very simple Python script, not a Discord bot written in Python, just a Python script, and you make it so it pastes text into the Discord client, and then sends that text, and you do that in a loop. Once you've run this enough times, that is going to be considered API abuse as well. Also, obviously, if you made a Discord bot that did the same sort of thing, or in the case of a third-party client, just making a third-party client in general. Cordless has existed for quite a while, so unless Discord suddenly had a grudge against him, he seems to think it's related to a new feature he was working on, related to creating a new PM channel. So he gives a brief explanation right here, but there's a bit more of a detailed explanation split across multiple of the issues, so basically what he thinks is it's related to creating this new PM channel via the slash user slash at me endpoint. And this was using the version 6 version of the endpoint. So during the testing for this, he had to do multiple client restarts, which could have potentially tripped Discord's rate limit. So the reason why third-party clients kind of get ignored most of the time is because most of the time, they're not really doing anything out of the ordinary that the normal client wouldn't do anyway. So in those cases, Discord can kind of just leave them alone, and in a lot of cases, probably doesn't even realize that they are there. But when you start doing things like tripping the rate limiting, that's when Discord is going to notice that something's up with this client and maybe they should actually look into it. And this seems to be what may have happened here. Now, I know I'm saying seems and may a lot, and that's because Discord has no reason to actually tell you the exact reason you're actually banned. Like a lot of platforms in the TOS, they have a clause that says we can ban you at any time for any reason without giving you an explanation. Now, let's just assume that at the time of the development, Marcel was doing absolutely nothing out of the ordinary, and I have no idea what he was doing at the specific time that he got banned, but let's just say that he was developing cordless as he always does. There could be another place where the rate limiting was tripped. So, because the Discord API isn't exactly public outside of what you can do with webhooks and bots, they usually go through some sort of library that actually makes it easier to do the binding. So, in the case of this client, it was using a library called Discord Go, which basically is Go bindings for Discord. Now, the reason why I mention this is because there's potentially a bug inside of this library related to creating a PM channel. I don't know how Discord works internally, so I can't say anything definitive, but that could definitely be a concern. And the reason why this is concerning is because Discord Go isn't just being used by cordless. Basically, every single Discord client that's written in Go also uses Discord Go. So two of them that come up to mind right now are 6Cord and GTK Cord. Luckily, both of those have been deprecated, but I did do videos on them on my channel, so I felt like I had to mention them. 
But what about other Discord clients, ones that aren't written in Go, and ones that use completely different libraries to call the same endpoint? So things like, say, Ripcord, which is my personal favorite, or the one that's basically most popular and anyone who uses a third-party Discord client knows about, which is Better Discord, or I think it's called Bandage Better Discord now, but most people just refer to it as Better Discord. I would still say that you should probably steer clear of them, at least for now, because we don't actually know whether people are going to keep getting banned, whether this was a one-off thing again, or what exactly the deal is here. So I'm just going to say, to be safe, don't use a third-party Discord client, at least for the foreseeable future. Now, one thing you might be wondering about is why Discord actually cares about third-party clients, because if you think about it, most other platforms, not just chat platforms, either don't care about them, so things like, say, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, they probably want you to be using the main client just because they can have their ad network running, but no one's actually getting banned from Reddit for using a terminal Reddit client, no one's getting banned from YouTube for using a third-party YouTube client, that's just not something that's actually happening, or in the case of other platforms, they're actively encouraged. So things like, say, Matrix, it's not just, oh, you can use them, please make other clients because that would be awesome to see. Now, we have the public explanations of why Discord doesn't like them. These probably play some sort of part, but I don't think these are the main reasons. So if you make a third-party client, it's easier to spam the API. But as I said earlier, it's very easy to write a Python script to do this, and anyone with even the most rudimentary level of programming experience can actually do this. Also, account security. And this part I can understand, because when you log into a third-party client, you typically have to give it your Discord login token, and this token basically is all you need to actually log into an account. So if a client developer wanted to, they could just steal a bunch of these tokens and then do whatever they wanted with these accounts. But this can also be done inside of the web client for Discord as well. So if you have, say, a malicious plugin installed that tracks every single one of your cookies, it's going to do the exact same thing. So I think the more likely explanation is one to incentivize Nitro, which is Discord's paid service, which gives you things like being able to use your remotes across servers, which if you have a third party client, you could do this sort of outside of Discord's control. So you could have this client where everyone running this client could see emotes from anyone else's servers and use emotes from anyone else's servers without really having to worry about Nitro. I don't think we really cut into their revenue that much, but it would be something they would want to stop. Also, the main Discord client forces updates on its users. So if you didn't realize, even if you have it installed with a package manager, Discord doesn't care about that. It's just going to update when it decides to update, and that's what you get. The only way to stop it from updating is to not open up the client. And if they want to push some new feature to users, or they want to push some new tracking to users, something like that, this is probably the easiest way they can do it. I don't like that it happens, but from their perspective, it's a good idea. And also, it's fair to assume that every single action you make inside of the Discord client, not just things you type, but how you're moving your mouse and things like that, is probably being tracked by Discord. And if you use a third-party client, the only thing they'd be able to track is anything sent back and forth between the client and the API endpoints, whereas with the official client, you can probably assume that they are storing this stuff and then sending it off at a later point if they don't send it as it's actually happening. Now, you might be wondering what actually happens to Cordless. So, Marcel has decided that he's not going to continue working on this project anymore. The repo will still exist, though. He said he will archive it at some point. He said this, like, two weeks ago. Still hasn't archived it, but... What he has done is taken it down from every single repo that it was on. So if you do want to go and install this, you do have to go and download the code base from the GitHub and then manually set it up yourself. He's not going to make it so it's easy to download just in case other people do actually get banned from using this project. Now, it will continue to work at least until Discord actually updates the API. He didn't go and intentionally break it so other users couldn't use it. So if you are still using Cordless, you are free to do so. Now, if you do really like Cordless and you have some Go experience, you can go and fork the project and keep working on it yourself. The library that's being used is still being developed as well. So you can keep using Discord Go and hopefully you don't end up getting banned in the process but as I mentioned earlier I'm not really going to encourage you to do so just in case you actually do get banned yourself but if you do want to do so be my guest. 
Now, as for me, what I'll be doing is going back to my previous Discord client videos and probably adding a thing to the top of the description and pinning a comment that says, hey, you're probably maybe potentially going to get banned for using this. If you do want to do so, you are accepting every single risk in doing so, but I'm not going to continue encouraging using the third party clients. Now, the other thing that I'm going to be doing is encouraging people to use something different besides Discord. So I have gone and created a Matrix community, which is similar to like a Discord server, and it's full of Matrix rooms, which are similar to Discord channels. And basically, I've bridged my entire Discord server over to Matrix, so you can be in Matrix or you can be in Discord and you can chat with the same people. And if my Discord server ever happens to be banned, I guess we're just going to be a Matrix community from now on. And I might bridge it over to other platforms like IRC and things like that, if that is something that people want to see. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald Corbinian, Andre, Nathan, Montezar, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter Lee Road, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 patrons. If you want to go and support my work, my links down below to my Subscribestar, Patreon, Leverpay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. There'll be a link down below to my Discord and my Matrix community. Feel free to join whichever one you want to join. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.